guys, I was asked about men that go their own way. This is a this is a bit of a political one, debatable, questionable, whatever. Um, my view on it is very simple. People that do their own thing, no problem with it whatsoever. I watched this video by Reggie Yates, which I'll put above, and I found that very manipulated by him, uh, which is why um, when somebody brought it up, I said I'll do a video. Because I actually watched that and thought, you know what, that video is just a mess. It's a lie. Um, it's been manipulated beyond recognition. Um, now, for me, as you know, I'm married. I'm happily married. But my marriage is more of a traditional marriage, which is probably uh, one of the things that's fundamentally different in the sense that a lot of people cannot find the same sort of relationships and set up and whatever. Um, I wasn't. I had no intention of getting married. I was probably already a men that go their own way sort of guy back before I met my wife, because I was quite happy just being single. Um, but the the thing in the West, it's very difficult to find people of that same sort of connection. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but I do find that I know more people are divorced than they are married. I do find that a lot of people are worse off after the divorce than before they got married. Um, and I would say most people I know are male. Now, I'm not saying that females come out in a bad way, um, don't come out in a bad way, because some do. I know some single women here that were divorced. Um, and I would say they're not living the life of Riley, but it's a case of there's many things that people people miss from society today and this is why I get men that go their own way. First thing I want to say on this is equality has become a fundamental push but is actually a myth. For me equality is actual, actually about ability and capability and delivery. It's not about that everybody should be able to do exactly the same as everybody else. They should have the same opportunity, but if you can't do it, you can't do it. You should have to change the system to accommodate it. And this is one of the fundamental problems. That's exactly what's happening, but it's also being selective. Um, what you're looking at is things like um, the Tesco's women on the checkout complain about the guys in the warehouse um, and want the same pay as them. The guys in the warehouse, I know myself being one that did it for Sainsbury's many, many moons ago um, while I was going through college. We worked three shifts, the morning shift, the night shift, and the afternoon shift. We worked weekends. We worked a lot of weekends. We had shift pattern changes to make sure we worked the weekends because they knew they always had people go off on a beer binge on a Friday and not come in on the Saturday or Sunday. So they manipulated your hours and everything else to make you come in more frequent. So there was times, I, I think the longest, I didn't see daylight for two months. Because you're on that artificial light, you arrive in the dark and you go home in the dark. It's not a nice environment. It's a crap job. It's dusty, it's dirty, it's heavy lifting. Um, and yet you've got somebody on a checkout that isn't even having to count anymore because they just scan a barcode, which is why you can do self-checkout with a lot of places now, um, saying that their wages are exactly the same, should be paid the same. My view, no, they shouldn't. Um, it's fundamentally one of the problems in the UK, because now you go, okay, well, I want the same pay. So, oh, yeah, you can have that. One your court case, bang. Oh, back pay as well. Yay, money for nothing. Think today, same thing. Similar, well, slightly different, but it's, it's one of the fundamental problems in the UK right now. Because um, the equality pay is affecting things in a big way, especially when they backdate it. Councils have had to sell a lot of stuff to back pay uh, cleaners and all sorts. Um, especially when you do a job match where you've got a, a bus, uh, so not bus driver, a bin truck driver with Dory in the cleaner that cleans the, the toilets. Because um, obviously this guy's got a lot more commitments, risks, driving license, issues, etc. Yet, make the pay equal and all the pension and everything goes to pot. Um, today, there's a company that may be going into receivership relating to, down to the fact that the HMRC 
agreed that a allowance used to get paid for stopping over, stopping over on um, care allowance for staying at, say, a care home, you get a fixed amount for a shift. So, like, say, £20 for a night, which isn't a lot of money. They've said it's got to be minimum wage now and backdated as well. One of the big problems with that is a lot of this work is government but it's a private sector company. So where the government, like I say, with the bin trucks and everything else, they just go, you know what, stick the council tax up. I try not to say bad words. But a, uh, something the taxpayers would just take out their money. Private companies already have a lot of bad contracts anyway. This is why Quillian collapsed. This is why you're going to see more FM companies collapse. The contracts are not viable to begin with. And it's just Rob Peter, pay Paul, blah, blah, blah. What's my point? Well, equality doesn't mean equality. That's one of the main things. Back, getting back on topic now. Um, yeah, equality is often manipulated in the sense that you can have a specific criteria. And then because somebody from a different background, different age, different whether it's a woman, whether it's somebody from a minority group or whatever, there is manipulation done um, to accommodate, and let's just say that, but the, it's an unfair environment. That's not equality. Equality is doing exactly the same. And I think somebody brought it up with the cabinet. There's not enough women in the cabinet for the running the government. No question about ability, capability, or delivery, or the fact there isn't enough women in the bloody parliament. Um, it was just a dumb thing put out there. Because this is the problem. It's, there's no thought to it. You know, not enough women pilots. Well, let's just get a passenger that's a woman and go fly the plane. It's the same thing. Uh, but anyway, equality is the first issue. Because th this is driving a lot of other problems. The marriage certificate is becoming a moving of the ownership of assets from a person to being controlled by the state. This is why the CSA was a big problem, because a lot of people had had divorces and had had agreements related to kids, etc., giving up the house. You know, you have the house, that's £300,000. And then the CSA goes, yeah, but your ex-wife doesn't want to work. Um, she wants to keep the house, though. You can pay her another £200 a week because you've got kids with her. And then the guy's supposed to give it up because she, they need the house, they need this, and it. You know what? Get the fat lazy git back to work. Um, if she could work. And I know I sound quite strong in that. It's because it happens a lot. I've had friends do this stuff, and I've explained to them how to avoid paying taxes and stuff through going self-employed so that they can actually minimise their actual wages. A friend of mine actually drove his BMW into a field at 80 miles an hour to destroy the thing rather than let it be taken to court. Um, the fundamental thing on this is they will drive the fact of some somebody that doesn't pay their ex-partner the right amount or whatever as if it's the norm. And yet the big part of this is a lot of people are being locked into poverty and hardship because they're being robbed blind by the state. Um, because at the end of the day, as long as the state ain't paying for it, they couldn't care less. And if you are in that boat, I'd have a look at moving to the Philippines and just giving a big couple of waves at the, at the airport. A lot of people have. A lot of people have just disappeared off the map completely. Um, yeah, just from my a friend, he, he worked for uh, Codemasters, a software, software company. Um, he was a graphics designer. He, his wife used to beat him. This is, his wife used to beat him. He had three kids with her. But he got to the point where he left. And they ended up getting a divorce. She kept the house. She kept most of his salary. Because uh, obviously the three kids. Um, his salary then was about £9,000 a month. No, well, sorry, that's wrong. It was about three thousand pounds a month after tax, because um, she was getting the majority of it. She three thousand plus. Yeah, she got three thousand a month. That's what it was. So he got more than three thousand, but it wasn't a lot more. He thought, what's the point? 
why am I working to pay for her to live in his house with her new boyfriend after she physically abused him for years? Um, and this is how he ended up living next to me because he just gave up and left Ireland and moved to um, moved to Worcester and become a turf accountant, a bookmaker. And he worked there. His salary wasn't great. I think it was twenty or twenty-four thousand pounds a year. And he did that. And then one day he come home, and he, he said, "Matt, look at this." And the CSA it kindly took all his salary, and there was this letter from his employer. They had taken the money directly from his employer, and they had left him four hundred and twelve pounds. The reason I remember is rent was four hundred, so it's twelve pounds for the month for his electric, the gas, the food. Um, and they said it read on the top because the court hearing, because there's a three month delay, um, they had added that money up. So there's a three month, so they added the £9,000 and then they added this month. So they added £12,000 for to be deducted because the court case was still in process to assess it for his lower wage. But they still billed him 12k and as such just took it direct from his salary. Um, he was. Quite lucky in a sense, his sister took him away from a holiday because he just didn't know what to do at that point. They come to Spain, he met somebody on the beach, moved to Spain, and that was the end of that. Um, the system, as long as the state isn't paying, they don't give a monkeys about you. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, that is one of the fundamental issues. Now, from a marriage point of view, for kids that are in those relationships that are now getting to that point, of well the males get to that point they are seeing that marriage is bad for a man and that is bad news and a lot of guys are not getting into those relationships they are quite simply seeing it as just the worst mistake they'll ever make in their life if they go down that path i know i sound quite blunt on this but it's reality i've met a lot of people that would never get married and when you speak to them they're just like and just have a girlfriend. Even then, a lot of them are very careful about the sex side of things because they know it's a gravy train. Um, because women, <laughs> this conversation is about to drop on to something else. In Worcester, you go on the housing list as a single man or whatever, wait five, seven years. Or maybe even as a couple, maybe three or four years, you start popping the kids out. You're talking a few months. As soon as that first kid drops, you know what? You get get into an emergency accommodation. Within a couple of months, you're into a house. Drop another one, bigger place. Drop three, a nice little four bed, all paid for by the state. As a single person, you can, you ain't got a chance to get on the run on the ladder in many cases these days. Especially if you come out of a divorce. Um, so I do understand men that go the wrong way in that sense. And I do recognise there is some fundamental things with society that's wrong. I also understand that some of the stuff relating to men that go the wrong way is being skewed. Um, if you actually read the Wikipedia relating to men that grow, go the wrong way, it's not about trolling, it's not about anti feminism, it's not about um, being politically active. It's very different. Um, but now we're on to another subject, which is being politically active. Do I agree with it? I believe there's a lot of stuff that is actually suppressing people's ability to actually freely speak and be open about things that they want to talk about. Um, me talking about things where, um, prime example, I actually brought this up on Facebook, they were out the the police in London. They were talking. They had some policeman. I can't remember who it was, uh, saying that the blacks that are stabbed aren't covered as much as others. The reason for that, and I, I do say this wholeheartedly in this in, in the view that I understand exactly what's going on here, is a black on black crime is not reported the same. And the reason it's not reported the same is statistically, if you added all those crimes in the newspaper on a daily basis, 
you would start to see some patterns that they don't want to be seen. They don't want them shown that there is a problem in society. Because if you look at the statistics related to crime committed by certain communities and the proportion or percentage of the population is disproportionate. They commit more crime than anybody else. So if you started showing that this crime was this, 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 you would start to see patterns emerging in your newspapers. That's why it doesn't get reported. It's not anti, anti-black or whatever. If anything, it's actually being pro-black by suppressing the figures. Because if you start to see the gang fights evolving X, X, Y, Z, relating to black youths attacking each other, etc., you would start to see a big pattern emerge. And that's why they don't do it. Because as soon as you start pushing that stuff in the media, do you know what the government has to do? Do something. And the big problem with trying to do that is as soon as you start doing something, it's called racial profiling. It's, it's the bureaucracy. It's the hypocrisy of bureaucracy. Because, ironically, the problem is on both sides. They've created a bigger problem because they've turned around and trying to make equality, which is equality is the biggest farce I've seen. Because, like I said, equal jobs, equal pay, equal. I'm all for it, but do the equal delivery put the equal effort in, all that. If you can't do it, tough, that's life. Um, but when you start saying, well, hang on a minute, we can't really report the real facts because people will start thinking or start realizing that the crime is disproportionate from certain groups in society. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Because I've, I've got to make my own view on people. I treat everybody the same. I have no issue with religion or anything else as long as it's not hurting anybody, not trying to change things or do it. As long as it's just people doing their own thing, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less if somebody was a feminist. I probably couldn't sit in a conversation with them for very long because when I say I don't care less, it also means I don't have to listen to it. Um, but I don't think that I don't think we're having enough debates and conversations about the real issues which are generating the, to the point where men go their own way is actually happening. Because fundamentally, this is from a society change. Things have changed. It's been forced. And, you know, if you ask me about my own kids, would I tell them to get married or whatever? I'd say no. And I'm not saying I would be disappointed if they did get married, but... In all honesty, these days, everything's about money. Everything's about the problems of maintaining your own wealth. And I would have to make sure my kids are looked after in the sense that um, there's a few of my friends got into these scenarios where they got divorced and still paying off the houses they don't live in because of the way the legal system works. It's just crazy. Um, so, yeah, there's some serious problems. I mean, if you look at marriage prior to recent years, uh, we're talking with Peter about this. Um, you don't know who Peter is, but he's a friend of mine here in Spain. Because, like he said, even before, when marriages didn't work, people still stuck together. Now it's worn like a trophy. And then after six, eight months, none of it wears off. Let's get divorced. For me, as my wife knows, and she's the same, we married for life, which is why we're, <laughs> that's why it doesn't even cross our minds, <laughs> because we're, we're already set for life. We're, we've got that commitment. Um, a lot of people don't have that commitment. They don't even look at it as that commitment when they get into marriage. So, yeah, I completely understand men that go their own way. I completely understand the fundamental problems in society today but I understand more that people are refusing refusing to accept there are major problems media manipulation um, this the, like I said this video above you'll see the manipulation in it but I would also say that 
some of that manipulation comes from the fact that I don't think the spectrum that they've chosen on the video was actually right. Um, I do think some of the some of the people on it are a bit um, picked for picked for the media circus of the BBC. Um, the comedian, for example, the comedian could have got away with quite simply having an inappropriate joke and just simply going. But you have to understand that as a comedian, even if I do not agree with the joke and it's a bad joke, that it does not make it a fact or personal opinion. It's a joke. Um, because as soon as you start suppressing something as being right or wrong, we start going down a whole moral path to the point as we might as well be just have the Taliban running everything. And even if I don't agree with some of this stuff, it's, you know what, I can switch my TV off. I can go into the other room. I don't have to buy a ticket for his comedy show. And that's pretty much everything. You have that freedom and ability to change. I do think Reggie Yates was very biased on this. I do think he went in there with the wrong mindset at the beginning. And when he got shot down by Men Who Go The Round Way about four interviews in, he's sitting there going, oh, well, I don't know what it is. You know what? You watch the first video. Just watch the way he acts about things when he comes out. Um, he says a lot of stuff after he's had the interviews and stresses it in a manipulative way. But at the same time, the one that stood out most is when he was at Speaker's Corner. And there was two people in there. There was two, two people. The one person is very... Um, aggressive with his viewpoint and I, I've got no problem. I understand these issues with that and I'm all for freedom of speech and everything um, but it's the way he said it so he, this is why he was getting a lot of heckling the 18 year old guy his view was very similar but it's politically correct because he was expressing male issues men issues and he put it in a w w format where he was asking you know is this right rather than saying get into the old feminist argument um two different things now why is this relevant listen to the way he talks about the two different people because the 18 year old guy he said that angry young blah blah he wasn't angry at all there was no anger in him at all in that if you listen to it there was no anger because what he's doing is adding something to suit his own objective if you look at some of the stuff um, at the context of the stuff even when he went to the guy's house and the way he talks about things, a lot of it is just questioning. A lot of it is just questioning, is this right or wrong? And that's why I found Reggie very manipulative um, because at the end of the day, these guys invited him into their homes, etc. But at the same time, they were being very open with him, while at the same time, he had a, an, a very manipulated view on things and projected that in his own media circus. Um, but I do understand that some of these topics may be too much for some people. I get it. You know, at the end of the day, this is part and parcel of the problem. People don't want to talk about these problems in the world. They're being told. Don't worry about it. We'll deal with that. Look at the whole Facebook thing at the moment. You probably get pop-ups on your Facebook telling you how they're going to look after you and remove things for you. Yeah, it's funny how it wasn't long ago there were people who were happy to work with. But please understand that it's okay for people to have their own opinions. And it's okay for people to decide to go their own way. I'm all for it. Thanks for watching.